G'day, how you going? I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you're in the world. It's the 24th of February 2022, so they say. Welcome, hello to all my subscribers, non-subscribers, trolls, bots, and especially hello to those locals alike. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're having a beautiful day. It's great here. We're having some lovely, much-needed rain where we are. This is a really, really interesting uh video that I'm going to share. A lot of people have spoken about this in the past and we always knew that something was off with all of these sculptures that we see and I think this might help in um, explaining what they are. So check it out with me. Sinister Sites, the San Sarovo Chapo, Chapel. Local legends about the San Sarovo Chapel of Naples claimed that the astonishing works of arts contained a result of sorcery and black magic. The sculptures appear impossible to create by hand, while the macabre display featuring two actual human bodies are said to be a result of ritual killings. Also, adding to the occult aurora surrounding the chapel, it's filled with Masonic symbolism. At first glance, the Capel San Sorivo is your typical Italian chapel from the 17th century, tastefully filled with paintings and sculptures of religious nature. However, a closer look at the various items in the chapel reveals that something is off about this place. Some sculptures are organic looking, that they lead many to believe that they were a result of supernatural processes. Process. Furthermore, the enigmatic symbolism found around the chapel heavily hints to an allegorical stoic message. And when visitors climb down a few stairs, they see this. It's a human uh, body with the nerves untouched. The chapel has been on display. Two actual human reigns, remains with their entire nervous system on display, creepily dubbed Adam and Eve. And even more creepily referred to as the anatomical machines, this bizarre display has been the subject of all kinds of rumours. To fully understand what's going on in the, with the chapel, one must understand its creator. Romando de Sanguero, the Prince of San Sarivo. While he was considered a brilliant inventor and a philosopher by many, others believe that he was a cruel black magician who killed people to conduct bizarre experiments. A visit at his San Sarivo chapel gives credence to both points of view as it puts on a display at all the Sangrino's alchemy genius and madness before looking at the bizarre works of art on display at the chapel. Let's first look at the man behind it. Raimondo, Raimondo de Seringo, the sorcerer's prince. And he's got a Freemason badge. When you see those badges, that is a Freemason, a Rosicrucian, a Jacobson, a... Um, Moors, all those kinds of groups. From the age of 10, Di Sterengo was educated at a Jesuit college of Rome. In 1730, at the age of 20, he came back to Naples using the Prince of San Sarivo. He joined the ranks of the occult societies. In spite of religious trainings that he had received with the Jesuits, the young men soon joined the secret brotherhood of the Rosicrucians. Aha, that's where it comes from, the Rosicrucians where he was initiated into the ancient alchemic rituals, the so-called sacred art or king's arch, which had been handed down throughout centuries from Egyptian priests to their disciples. Don Romando had found his life calling. While maintaining the utmost silence about his brothers and teachings he was receiving, he left no documents whatsoever on the activities of the mysterious sect. The prince radically changed his life and devoted all his time to alchemy. Vials, Ovens and embellics filled to the cellar of his place, and the nightmare it was not rare to see strange coloured vapours and disgusting smells coming out of the bowed windows of his cellar. It was at the time that the Neapolitans started labelling him as a sorcerer. Reno del Stefano, Romando del Seringo, the sorcerer prince. Di Seringo introduced Freemasonry to his city and he became the head of the Neapolitan Masonic Lodge. This fact, combined with his knack for presenting particular inventions such as the eternal flame, made from chemical compound of his creation and human skull bones, only grew the legend surrounding Di Seringo. Prince Romando Di Seringo was known for his eccentric, ignatic and mystical man. He was the head of the Neapolitan Masonic Lodge, the symbols of which interspeed, interspersed throughout the chapel 
Man was a student of numerous areas of the science as well as alchemy and other mystical disciplines. He also spoke several exotic languages such as Hebrew, Arabic and was an inventor. Some of his inventions of which were rather bizarre such as the mechanized carriage with wooden horses that was said to be able to travel over both land and water. These eccentrics led to Prince Garning a reputation as a practitioner of wizardry and black magic and rumors abounded that he performed sinister magical rituals human sacrifices and curses. It was also said that he could perform great feats of alchemy such as creating blood out of water and even thin air and that he used the various body parts of his sacrificed victims in his odious spells and potions. The prince was said to lock himself away for days on end and perform demented experiments on human beings such as reanimating the dead. These dark rumours and legends have swirled around the prince and made him into the man to be feared and avoided. A larger-than-life black sorcerer who could be bend magical and natural forces at his will. The prince did little to deny these rumours and it is even thought that he even encouraged them. Brant Swanner, The Bizarre Atomical Machines of Italy One of Di Serengo's mag- many hobbies was bel canto, which means beautiful singing. Sounds good, doesn't it? Who doesn't appreciate beautiful singing? However, for Dai Sangero, bel canto means buying little boys from impoverished parents, castrating them and forcing them to sing. In spite of his being acquainted with the pleasures of family life and having children, the prince enjoyed going around his many estates looking for young boys with beautiful voices. He would usually find them in the church choir. Then he would buy them from their parents, usually poor, illiterate peasants who had many children. And he had his personal physician, Don Guspet, Guspet, Salarengo castrate them. He would then lock them up in the conservatory of Jesus Christ Paul in Naples, where these young castrated boys started their careers as sopranists. He saw in the castrate a search for perfection, which according to the Rosicrucians resulted from annulling the dualism that comes from separation, a return to the primordial endogenous being, Ibid. As Di Seringo's reputation grew and his writings gained publicly, he made powerful friends and powerful enemies. His involvement with Freemasonry led to his writings being banned and for him to be excommunicated by the Catholic Church. He spent the later days of his life decorating the San Cerevo Church, turning this small place into a grandiose representation of the alchemical and Masonic path to illumination. A Mysterious Occult Temple before it was transformed by Romano de Serengo, the San Serevo Chapel was already the subject of bizarre rumours. It was said to have been constructed on an old temple of Isis, and, to prove this fact, locals point to a massive stature of the god of the Nile located just around the corner from his home. The Statue of the God of the Nile and Naples According to the Sinister Factor, the Palazzo San Sarevo was the scene of a brutal murder at the end of the 16th century when composer Carl Gustado caught his wife and her lover together and hacked them to death on their bed. Up until 1888, a passageway connected the Palazzo San Sarevo to the San Sarevo Chapel. However, it was when Romando de Di Sangro turned this chapel into an alchemical project that site become an attraction, especially in occult circles, other than enigmatic hidden messages of the chapel in its works of art that mystify visitors. They appear to daring, daringly declare, I was an occultist and this is what I could do. The works of art at the San Sarevo Chapel are unique, indeed unique, powerful and unsettling, forcing visitors to ask, how did he do that? And... When one knows the historic and alchemical background of the prince, observing them leads to the question, was this done through occult processes? The most compiling example of this is the veiled Christ, set in the middle of the chapel. The sculpture of Christ, covered by a thin veil, has an unnerving quality. How was this marble sculpture made using a block of stone and a chisel? The veil is too real. Veil Christ. Completed in 1753 by Gustep Santa Marino, was commissioned by Romano di Serengo. It portrays Christ deposed after crucifixion, covered by a transparent veil. 
This veil is rendered with such stubbly as to almost deceiving to the eye, and the effect seen in person is really striking. One gets the impression that the real sculpture is lying underneath, and that the shroud could easily be grabbed and lifted. It's precisely because of San Torino's extraordinary virtuosity in sculpting the veil that the legend surrounding this Christ dies hard, fooling from time to time even specialised magazines, otherwise in irreproachable art websites. Legend has it that Prince Romando, Romando de Sango, who commissioned the work, actually fabricated the veil himself, laying it down over San Marino's sculpture and petrifying it with his alchemic method of his own invention. Hence the phenomenal liquidness of the drapery and the transparency of the tissue. Bizarro bizarre, the mystery of the mystery of Chapel San Cerevo. For centuries, a black legend surrounded this sculpture and others in the marble chapel that held that the prince used a mysterious alchemical process to marbleize a fine cloth placed over the sculpture. The Veil Christ from Above Some observers noted a troubling detail about the sculpture. Christ still appears to be breathing. There may be another small abnormally, abnormality in this Veil Christ as there is a slight indentation over the nostril, as if the shroud is being sucked in by the breath. Is this dead Jesus alive? Did Diego believe that Jesus had not died on the cross? If so, perhaps he was not only a mason, but a member of another even mysterious, mysterious order. Jesus disappeared from his tomb, but he is not alone. The prince's tombstone can still be seen in the chapel. He died on the 12th 22nd of March 1771 from a sudden illness caused by his mechanic experiments during the long nights he spent in his laboratory he had probably inhaled or ingested some toxic substance which at the time had indeed been become lethal his sarcophagus however does not contain his body someone stole it when or why is not known Romando had a plaque placed in the chapel stating that the person who commissioned the works, i.e. himself, was moved by a desire to astonish, discover and teach Philip Copens, the alchemical chapel. On the left of the veil of Christ is the chastity, a sculpture modelled after Di Seringo's mother, Celia Catid. Teen Doringa. Sorry for saying these names wrong. The naked woman is covered from head to toe by a thin veil which reveals her forms in every detail. This work of art is once again another supernatural feat of sculpture. How can this effect be achieved using marble? And a lot of people have been talking about this for years. It's just exquisite how, how these art pieces have been made. So the top one's the chastity. And then there's a close-up shot. It, it's just unreal how beautiful these works of art are. <clears throat> the Chastity, La Purisca, by Con... Sorry, I can't even say that one. With its drapery veiling the female character as if it was transparent, is another mystery of sculpting technique. While these stones seem to have lost its weight, becoming ethereal and most float, almost floating. Imagine how the artist started his work from a square block of marble, how his mind's eye saw the figure inside of it, how patiently he removed all which didn't belong, freeing the figure from the stone little by little, smoothing the surface, refining, chiseling every wrinkle of her veil. Although the statue was modelled after Serego's mother, it is clearly a tribute to the most important figure in Freemasonry. The Veiled Isis. The Veiled Woman can be interpreted as an elegy of wisdom and the reference of the Veiled Isis, a special divinity of the science of initiation, made in South Italy, the Alchemist Chapel. Indeed, the occult symbolism, Veiled Isis is the ultimate representation of the occult mysteries where the truth is veiled on the profane until the true historic initiation. The mysteries of Hermeticism is a great spiritual truth hidden from the world by ignorance of the world and the keys of the secret doctrines of ancient philosophers are all symbols by the virgin isles veiled from head to foot she reveals her wisdom only to the tried and initiate few who have earned the right to enter her sacred presence tear from the veil of nature is shrouded of obscurity and stand face to face with the divine reality 
To the modern seeker, she is an epitome of the great unknown, and only those who unveil her will be able to solve the mysteries of life, death, and generation and regeneration, mainly P. Hall, the secret teaching of all ages. Locals claim that the chastity is placed exactly where the statue of Isis stood, back when the chapel was the temple of Isis. On the opposite side of the chastity is the disillusionment, another perplexing sculpture infused with profound symbolism, modelled after Prince Father Antonio de Seringo. It depicts a man struggling to free himself from a net as he's been helped by a winged youth. Close up of the shot. It's just amazing the intricate work that's gone into that, isn't it? Once again, a mystery surrounds this sculpture. How can a net be sculptured over a body that appears to have already been sculptured underneath? Was an alchemical process used to achieve the astonishing result? Not unlike the chastity, this sculpture is an analogy of a fundamental Masonic concept, the freeing of man using the intellect. Its allegorical meaning is that man is intent on freeing himself from false belief, the net, with the aid of the intellect, the young man, Reno de di Stefano, San Serevo. Although there are several other sculptures in the chapel, the three above clearly stand out and are connected with their mysterious organic qualities. Furthermore, these sculptures constitute a historic triangle, with the chastity on the left representing the female principle, disillusionment on the right representing the male principle, and the veiled Christ in the middle representing the per perfect man. These sculptures historically represent the most fundamental hermetic principle duality merging to create a perfect being. In the occult circles, this concept is personalized by o Isis and Osiris uniting to create Horus, the perfect being. In my article about Cyrus, I explain, to achieve perfection, the initiate must successfully understand and internalize the dual nature of the world, good and evil, masculine and female, black and white, etc. Through alchemy metaphor, first, this concept is symbolic symbolically represented by the union of Osiris and Isis, the male and the female principles, to give birth to Horus, the star child, the Christ-like figure, the perfect man of Freemasonry who is equated with a blazing star. The original floor of the chapel also heavily plays on the concept of duality, historic initiation. It was changed in 1909. And look, don't you see the swash sticker there? The, um, they outlawed it. Uh, they did what they did in the 40s so people wouldn't know the true meaning of it. It's actually your heart valves and your heart flow. The original floor was black and white, meant to represent duality and the unification of opposing forces. Not unlike the checkerboard floor and all the Masonic lodges, the intricate tridimensional design depicts a labyrinth, a Masonic symbol for initiation. The labyrinths and the mazes were favoured places of initiation among many ancient cults. Remains of these mystic mazes have been found along the American Indians, Hindus, Persians, Egyptians and Greeks. The most, the famous labyrinth of Creek in which roamed the bull-headed min minotaur was unquestionably a place of initiation into the Cretan mysteries. Labyrinths were symbolic of the involvements of the illusions of the lower world through wonders which wanders the soul of man in search for the truth. Hall just like duality opposes black and white, the sublime works of art described above are opposed to a morbid and sinister display. The anatomical machines, Adam and Eve. The two anatomical machines on display at Capella San Sarevo. What the heck are those things, you might ask? Well, they're exactly what you are hoping they are not, and maybe worse. This exhibit consists of two actual skeletons of male, mature male and fe pregnant woman. The entire nervous system is exposed where the arteries are colored red and the veins are colored blue. The fetus of the pregnant woman was also originally on display, but the specimen mysteriously disappeared. The macabre display. How did Romano de Serego preserve the nervous system of these human remains? Well, that's a mystery that keeps on being mysterious and once again, a dark legend surrounds the atomical machines. It was indeed a rumour that Adam and Eve were two servants of Dicerango who were injected with a substance that crystallised the nervous system, 
killing them in the process. Here's a dramatic account of the legend. The prince, just like a saucer, is stirring the preparation in a big cauldron. Eventually, the long-awaited reaction takes place. A mysterious liquid is ready. On the other side of the room, the two bound and gag servants can't even scream anymore. The man is sobbing, while the woman, even immobilized, stays vigilant and alert. Perhaps the new life she carries in the womb prevents her from giving in to fear, commanding an already impossible defense. The prince hasn't got much time. He has to act quickly. He pulls the liquid down a strange pump and then gets close to his victims. In their eyes he sees an unnameable terror. He starts with the man, puncturing the jugular vein and injecting the liquid right into the bloodstream with a syringe. The heart will pump the preparation through the body and the prince watches the antagonizing man's face as the dense poison begins to circulate. There, it's all done. The servant is dead. It took more... It will take two to three hours for the mixture to solidify, and surely more than a month for the putrid flesh to fall off the skeleton and the network of veins, arteries, capillaries, and the process turned into marble. Now it's the woman's turn. Bizarro Bazaar, Mysteries of San Cerebro Chapel. Recent studies claim that Di Serengo artificially recreated the nervous system of these bodies using wire and beeswax. However, manually recreating such a complex system of wires and near impossible tasks. The two skeletons are overlaid with a complex twisting network of metal tendons and hardened arteries and veins which represent the arterial system, the visca, the muscular of human beings with amazing meticulous accuracy. The skulls of the two figures are hinged and can be opened to reveal an incredibly detailed spider web of blood vessels within. Upon their unveiling, the disturbing models were, were so mystifying and grotesque that it was believed that the Dark Prince had actually used his black magic and alchemy on some of his unwilling servants to morph them into these ab abominations. Regardless of whether they are a result of black magic or not, Adam and Eve present a number of very real mysteries, not for the least of which is how they were made in the first place. For years, the method of construction was a source of bafflement among scientists and doctors. Were the intricate, hardened circuitry systems real? And if so, how did they remain so remarkably well preserved for over 200 years? Were they artificial? If so, how could they be reproduced so faithfully? Since there was little to no documentation as the original creation of the anatomical machine, Machines, these questions for which the answers long remained elusive. The main theory was that two anatomical machines were created through a process known as plasticization or human metallization, which involves injecting substance directly into the circuitry system of subjects while they were still living, after which these materials would travel along veins and heart and painfully killing the unfortunate victims in the process. However, no one really knows for sure. No matter what the case may be, these atomical machines aren't simply there to freak out visitors. They are also said to have served symbolic purpose in the alchemy, alchemical fate work that is the chapel. Through various clues, it is believed that the atomical machines represent the last stage of the alchemical process called Rebudo, the reddening symbolized by a red phoenix rising from its ashes. Interesting fact, the machines were originally on display in a room called the Phoenix. Originally, the original placement of the atomical machines inside the Phoenix apartment on a revolving platform looked like a symbolic choice. Maybe Romando de Sangro thought of them as a depiction of the Rebudo, a stage in the search for the Philosopher's Stone in which matter recomposes itself, granting immortality. The last one can say that it is the chapel surrounded by mystery. This is the only amplified by the fact that Di Serengo destroyed his own scientific archive before he died. Then, after his death under the threat of excommunication by the church due to Di Serengo's involvement with Freemasonry and alchemy, his descendants destroyed what was left of his writings, formula, laboratory equipment and the results of his experiments. All that is left is the thinly veiled symbolism. In conclusion, in the image of its creator, the Chapel of San Cerevo is brash, unapologetic in its celebration of a stoic path and showcase of the alchemical know-how of enthusiastic occultists. While occult literally means hidden from the public, 
Romando de Serengo spent his life publicizing his interests and discoveries, barely placing a veil on the true nature of his experiments. The chapel is, therefore, one of the rare instances where magic can be seen in plain sight. While the sublime works of arts of the chapel are a celebration of life, beauty and spirituality, the morbid manipulation of cadavers both below celebrates death, decay and the gruesome. In short, not unlike the black and white floors that used to cover the occult temple, this chapel of San Sarevo visually represents the dualistic nature of the universe and, by correspondence, the dualistic nature of man. Once these opposing forces are united and the duality is resolved, the stoic perfection is said to be attained. To achieve this, one must not be afraid to look towards the heavens and stare into the depth of hell what do you reckon about that man isn't that interesting i just found that really really interesting i'll find some more out about it but it's interesting romando de seringo was born in Tora maggie or oh, sorry for saying these names wrong in 1710 and died in naples in 1771 the Prince of San Sarevo was an historic inventor, atomist, soldier, Freemasonry, and an Italian alchemist. He lost both his parents at the age of 10. He was entrusted to his grandparents, who sent him to study at a Jesuit school in Rome, where he remained until the age of 20. He was a prodigy as a child, and in fact, he went out of school as one of the greatest geniuses of the 18th century. In 1729, he acquired the position of... Prince of San Sarevo and married his cousin Carleta Prince, an exhibit in military arts, was also a colonel, colonel of the Capitol regi Regiment where he distinguished himself in the Battle of Vittori, fighting valiantly against the Austrian Austrians in 1744. This is the place where he fought. Notice the coat of arms with the double eagle. The chapel itself dates back to 1590. It was built by the Duke of John Francesco de Serengo on the grounds of the affluent San Sarevo family as a private place of worship and later was converted into a family burial chapel under the hand of Alessandro de Serengo in 1613. It wasn't until between 1749 and 1766 when Prince Romando de Serengo commissioned major renovations that chapel began to take on the barbaric Masonic inspired form it exhibits today. Romando de Serengo went to great lengths to hire some of the most well-known artists at the time to help turn the chapel into a latch luxurious lavish showcase of artwork hundreds of hours have gone into all the intricate designs and workings of it it's amazing and we just don't build like this anymore do we you know nothing gets built like that so prince romando de serengo was known as an eccentric enigmatic mystical man he was the head of the Maholionic Masonic Lodge, the symbols of which are interspersed throughout the chapel, and he was a student of numerous areas of science as well as alchemy and other mystical disciplines. He also spoke several exotic languages such as Hebrew, Arabic, and was an inventor. Some of his inventions were rather bizarre. Uh, we've read that one. These eccentrics led to the prince gowning reputation as a practitioner of wizardry and black magic. Rumors abounded that he performed sinister magic. These eccentrics led to the prince gowning a reputation as a practitioner of wizardry and black magic. Rumors abounded that he performed sinister magic rituals, human sacrifices, and curses. It was also said that he could perform great feats of alchemy, such as creating blood out of water even thin air, and he even used the various body parts of his sacrifice visit victims and odious spells and potions. Prince was said to lock himself away for days to an end and perform demented experiments on human beings such as reanimating the dead. Most of this I read just before. He had uh, more than 30 is various works of art that can be found here. Here one can find one of the mysterious works of art that were typical over time. One such piece is a sculpture created by Gustep San Marino that he is usually referred to as Cristo Velto or the Veiled Christ which depicts a post crucifixion of Christ and was crafted from a particular marble substance like invented by Prince Romando di Seringo himself peaks human skin and the fabric of the veil the effect is somewhat unnerving 
it seems as if the sculpture was a real living person that was wearing an actual veil rather than a completely marble construct ready to pop awake at any time. Romando de Serengo, Prince of San Revo, 30th of January 1710 to 22nd of March 1771. wonder if he was taken on that date because they loved those dates. It's one of their ritual dates. Was an Italian nobleman, inventor, soldier, writer, scientist, alchemist, and Freemason best remembered for his reconstruction of the San Sarevo Chapel in Naples. The seventh prince of San Sarevo was born here into a noble family. His father was Antonia, Duke of, and his mother was Celia. Argon. His mother died shortly after his birth. From the age of 10, he was educated at Jesuit College in Rome. At 1730, at the age of 20, he returned to Naples, became a friend of Charles Bourbon, who became King of Naples in 1734, for whom he invented a waterproof cape. In 1744, he distinguished himself as the head of regiment during the Battle of Vitae in a war between the Habsburgs and the Bourbons. While in command of the military, he built a cannon out of lightweight materials which had longer range than the ones, standard ones at the time and wrote a military treatise on the employment of infantry for which he was praised for by Frederick II of Prussia. And he's also got that Freemason Rosicrucian badge on. His real interests, however, were the studies of alchemy, mechanics, and sciences in general among his inventions were a hydraulic device that could pump water to any height, an eternal flame using chemical compounds of his own invention, a carriage with wooden cork horses which could be driven by cunning systems of paddle wheels that could travel both on land and water, coloured fireworks, a printing press which could print different colours in a single impression. Publishing. The prince spoke several languages as well as Arabic and Hebrew. After returning to Naples, he set up a printing press in the basement of his house where he printed both his own works and those of others, somewhat translated himself. As some of those were censored by the ecclesiastical authors, he also wrote anonymously. Some of his publications were clearly influenced by Freemasonry and he communicated with his fellow Masons such as Scott Andrew Michael Ramsey, whose Voyages of Cyrus he translated and published, and the English poet Alexandra Pope. Apparently that's just a, a stage name, Pope, whose uh, rap of the lock he translated and published, although due to condemnations by the Jesuits, he had denied these activities. He was head of the Napoleonic Masonic Lodge until he was excommunicated by the church, making an enemy of the Napoleon Central uh, Cardinal, Gustav Spinal. The excommunication was later revoked by Pope Benedict, probably on the account of the influence of the de Serengo family. Whilst in Naples, he forged a friendship with Fortunano Bartolomeo de Philippe, sorry for saying that wrong, second Count de Penzoult, who had been appointed Chair of Experimental Physics and Mathematics at Naples University by Celestino Galani, and later set up the famous publishing press at Vaughan in 1762. Together, the Prince and the Count translated the physical John Arbot's notes from Latin. Rumours. Many legends grew up about around his alchemical activities, that he could create blood out of nothing, that he could replicate the liquefaction of blood of the San Dorino, and that he had people killed so he could use their bones and skins for experiments. The San Sarevo Chapel was said to have been constructed on an old temple of Isis, and that the Dan Serengo was said to have been a Rosicrucian. To justify this, locals pointed to a massive statue of the god of the Nile, located just around the corner from his home. To add sense to the dread, his family home in Naples, the Plaza of San Sarebo, was a scene of a brutal murder at the end of the 16th century when Capozzo caught his wife and her lover and hacked them to death. In later life, the later years, his life was dedicated to decorating the San Sarebo Chapel with marble works from his greatest artists of time, including Antonio, Francesco, Gustep, 
San Marino, whose veil cries, detailed marble veil, was thought by many to be created by his alchemy and preparing atomical models. Two of the models, known as atomical machines, are still on display in the chapel and have given rise to legends as to how they were constructed. Even today, the exact method is not known. Until recently, many Neapolitans believed that the models were of his servant and pregnant woman, in whose veins of artificial substance was injected under pressure, but the latest research has shown that these models are artificial. He destroyed his own scientific archive before he died. After his death, his descendants under the threat of excommunication by the church due to his involvement with Freemasonry and alchemy destroyed what was left of his writings, formula, laboratory equipment as a result of experiments. I dare say that the uh, Rosicrucians and the Freemasons took him because the Rosicrucians and the Freemasons joined hands on the 25th of June in 1725. In his death, he died in Naples in 1771, his death being hastened by the continuous use of dangerous chemicals in experiments and inventions. In, in 1794, the Swedish naturalist Carl Peter Thunberg, I don't know if it's Red A de Greta Thunberg, named the plant genius Sans Forever after him. Cool. What do you think of that? That's just different, eh? He uh, joined one of the Libra Matura, a circle of Italian Freemasons, where he became a Mason brother, one of the first Masonic lodges in Italy that was created by the prince called Rosa Domingo. In a few years, he advanced degree and became a Grand Master of all lodges. So he would have been a very high up man. Sorry for saying these names wrong, just typical Aussie. So his inventions. His inventions were many, for we know 19, but could even be more. Among them are weapons, such as a musket and a cannon, a system to remove the salt to make drinking water from the sea, a light that can last long without consuming too much matter, fireworks of various colours and many others. One of the most important, however, that has come down to us in good condition is that of two atomical machines, two life-size atomical models that consist of two human skeletons, a man and a woman, bloodstreams of different color, blue and red. The legend says that the prince would obtain the materialization of blood circuit, injecting a compound of his own invention, and since the only pump available to push the liquid from the thin capillaries was the heart that the two unfortunates were still alive when the experiment was done. A soldier with a musket, the one invented by him, could fire real shots of or work with compressed air. Ah, there you go. See, I think those um, cannons, you know, like the ones they say um, shoot hard balls of iron, I don't think they do. I think they were like something that shot with air. They just said here, that soldier... Um, could fire real shots with compressed air. I really do think that the cannons we see today are not what, what they tell us they are. Two more inventions. He devoted himself to his invention and experiments for the rest of his life. The prince described in detailed inventions in his work, he invented a folding stage throughout mechanisms that closed the stage like a book. A breech-loading rifle, an iron cannon, a maritime carriage able to navigate, the written embossed on the stone, which anticipated the lithograph process for a few centuries, and numerous other gadgets beside atomical machines, marble alchemy, and multicolored printing.